Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. We have this very lovely F2 generation uh, smooth death adder that was produced here. Uh, she is a granddaughter of the, the male uh, downstairs and uh, like all the death adders I'm going to uh, attempt to move her into one of the larger bins downstairs and as you can see death adders uh, are really sort of limp noodles on, uh, on a hook she'll be a little butthurt of course uh, because I'm moving her I'll take her label go downstairs and put her in a bin that's uh, been prepared for her. Uh, downstairs, I, you know, I am for positioning hooks all over the place. Uh, um, sort of like the right tool for the right job. Here's an intermediate size hook I got from my friend Chris at Get Hooked. Uh, very nice, well-balanced uh, tool. Um, just the right size for this particular job. And we have our limp noodle death adder here. Well, uh, I already put some substrate in here. Uh, so I'll put this in here. And I'll give her water later after I get her in there. Uh, she will, of course, be butt hurt, but... You can see that uh, she's well nourished when I lift the lid. Now, I'm very careful putting death adders in containers like this because uh, back at the old lair, I had a rough death adder and I found that it had the scourge of snake keepers, that M word with the eight legs that I won't even mention. <laughs> uh, I Preventamited the container, uh, took it out of the uh, container that it was in, discarded uh, uh, that because it was just potentially contaminated. And as I was putting the lid on, the death adder jumped up on the rim. And right when I had my hand like this to push the lid down, it nipped me right on the wrist here. Um, that uh, required myself and the stock of antivenin to go visit the emergency room and uh, uh, get prepared uh, uh, for a possible envenomation. Uh, fortunately, it was a dry bite, uh, and I did need antivenin uh, after we removed the, uh, the pressure bandage. Um, other than costing $9,000 uh, uh, in hospital bills, uh, it was uh, not a big issue. So we are very careful with death adders in small containers like this because they can jump out and, uh, and do things you don't expect them to do. So like I said, uh, this is a granddaughter of the male that lives here. Uh, he is my remaining uh, uh, male, uh, although I've got a daughter and another granddaughter of him. Uh, I just don't like interbreeding, therefore I'm not breeding a dad against his daughter or granddaughter. Well, amazing, you decided the hooking was okay, huh? Well, here you go. You got a little bit bigger digs, and uh, I think you'll be happy there. She's quite lovely. Puts on a very nice caught alluring show. Uh, this is why she's a bit chubby, because when she does that behavior, 
I like to reward her for it so she continues to do it because it's a very cool natural behavior. Um, so we'll let her get settled into her uh, new uh, tub here. And last, of course, uh, we'll stick her tag up here. And we'll move on to our next task in the lair on this Sunday. I moved the young ring water cobras at least two of them back in their own bins over here. They were in this big uh, uh, cage with uh, another. There's three of them all total. Um, but it was tough to get them to feed. It was tough to figure out which ones were eating and which ones weren't. Uh, so I separated them again and now everybody is feeding quite nice but what happens when you feed them is they poop and when they poop the cage needs to be clean and the butt hurt cycle starts all over again. <laughs> um, these saw scales that I moved from over there were feeding un amazing. I mean they would come and you know straighten out and come up out over the rim of the tub expecting food when I pulled it out. Now they're all butt hurt because I moved them and they're not eating. Uh, so uh, I am uh, going to clean the water culprit cage because there's just a bunch of flies in there and the flies are bad. Um, and unfortunately, Mr. Water Cobra does not appreciate room service. Uh, but this is the way it is. Yes, I know. Now these are quite uh, lively to say the least when they want to be. Um, so, oh, easy, easy, easy. I know, I'm touching you, I'm sorry. Beautiful, aren't they? Just amazing things. Come on. Oh, and he's gone through the loops and on the floor and just being Snake hockey. Why is this door for closed? I want to be able to make a okay. quick getaway. So, you know, I'm trying to show you these rather than just dump them quickly into a pail. Therefore, uh, uh, you get to see them, and sometimes, most of the time, you get to see me playing snake hockey with them. Oh, and getting pooped on. And getting pooped on, but that's that's what happens. Uh, you know, in the process of uh, making videos for your enjoyment is uh, you play snake hockey a lot. Whereas if I just wanted to move things about really quick, uh, that wouldn't be the case. So we will up straight out and replace it and then put the hut back in in a water dish and put them back in there and uh, uh, be done with it. I was uh, trying to inspect uh, what sex that was when it went wacky on me. I think it was a male. some psilocybin mushrooms out of this. Maybe you can't uh, seal it quite so tightly. You're going to need to let it dry out in between. Well, yeah, I know. Maybe that's what I need to do. Well, once in four 
tension it. It's easier to make it wet than to make it dry, but that's maybe what I have to do is just leave it open, let it dry out. Boy, and that is expensive stuff. Yeah, it is. Now I gotta get a water dish, so I will be right back. Silly thing. Oh yeah, I don't have food for you. I never feed you. But you're always looking for food. I Yeah, see, no no food. No food. No food. He's checking out my hands. I'm holding each of them up for him to inspect. Yes, he got fed a nice sized rat yesterday, but of course is is feeling very malnourished and uh, expecting anything and everything uh, uh, to fall into his mouth. But now he's getting all angry because yes. we don't have food. Yes, that, that's typical. <laughs> Damn it! You guys were supposed to bring food. Okay, so let's see if we can get this little glider back in there without getting bit. Now, water cobra venom. Oh, charge right up the side. Hello, nice to see you too. Uh, these guys uh, have very purely neurotoxic venom. Uh, South African polyvalent neutralizes it very well. don't want to do that. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go on. There you go. He's going to be a long snake. He's going to have to very soon go to a normal vision cage. Okay, so he can be all butthurt and there all he likes. Now let's uh, this one. Ah, I see you already moved your hut and already wound up because you smelled your brother and get all upset. Uh, this is probably another male. Um, a little bit smoother. As you can see, I'm not playing with the snake eye. This water dish can be salvaged. This is the non-glamorous uh, portion of keeping snakes, of course, or keeping any animal, you know, dog, cat, guinea pig, hamster, rat, mice, whatever. A uh, certain amount of cleaning goes into any of those equations. It's just that with venomous snakes, it's a, a much more dangerous, involved task than cleaning cat's litter box, but it's uh, just the way things go. And there we see uh, the other character, uh, again, thinking that I'm here to bring food and, and not do anything else. Her cage or his cage is generally clean right now and got fed yesterday. Yeah, by the way, I fed these guys yesterday so as uh, they weren't going to get butt hurt and not feed this week. Uh, 
Um, so, on occasion, you have to think a little bit ahead. Oh, I've got to clean this cage, which means they're going to be not happy with me and not want to eat. So, let's feed them the day before. them until the following weekend to feed. Now I'm going to leave that open and let it dry out. Uh, let's see. This hut can go back in there. The advantage of not scrubbing the cage absolutely clean is that it has their scent. It feels like home. It's just uh, it's just like in the hotel room. You leave, uh, the maid does their thing and you come back, except in this case, the maid evicts the occupants uh, out of safety uh, concerns. <laughs> All right, so let me clean this up. Stop scowling. <laughs> okay. So let's get this uh, beastie back in here. Now I'm thinking since it uh, it behaved and was cooperative going in, I think going back it will be quite the, the opposite. But you never can tell. And uh, there you go. There you go. Oh, that's very nice. Right into your hut. Oh, keep your snoot in there. So I think these two are the males, and that's the female. Uh, she's very, uh, very interested in food. Hi. I know. I know you see me. You're getting all excited. It's a lot it's, lighter too. It's the man that brings the good stuff to eat. These are my favorite of the, of the cobras. Uh, like I said, their venom is purely neurotoxic. It's neutralized well with African polyvalent. Uh, the good part is that the purely neurotoxin means that you won't lose a pound of flesh if you get bit, like you will with other nausea that have defensive bites. These guys, their venom is only used for offense and not defense. So, uh, plus, when they get past this teenage years, uh, they settle into snakes like the thud, which are pretty relaxed unless you're going to feed them and relatively easy to handle. <laughs> 